This is the first in a duo of tutorials that deal with our minds, our mindsets. We've already done the ear training, now it's time to really concentrate on our mind. I've said in many tutorials that theremin playing does not just happen in your arms and your shoulders and your elbows and your wrists and your fingers. It happens in your entire body. It engages the entire body just as playing any other instrument engages your entire body. In working with people for over two decades, I have found three very common mindsets that can actually hinder or negatively impact your ability to progress. And here they are. The first one is something that is extremely obvious. And the minute you started to try to play a theremin, the very first time, you had to face it. And now you're practicing and playing all the time. And the mindset is the psychological barrier of there being nothing to see, nothing to touch, and nothing to feel. There's no visual reference for where the pitches are, and there is nothing to touch, obviously, and there's nothing to feel. But by that I mean there is no physical feedback or tactile feedback from the theremin itself. A piano, you have a tactical sense of tactile tactile <laughs> sensation to playing guitar. There is a tactical component to playing these instruments, but with the theremin, nothing. And you go, well, duh, that's obvious. We know that, and I'm just playing my theremin. But I'm here to tell you that your mind may consciously agree with you, but subconsciously it may be having a little bit of trouble, regardless of how long you've been playing the theremin for. So think about it this way. Do you find yourself looking at your hands when you play? Do you find yourself looking at the pitch rod when you're playing? Do you find yourself looking at the relationship between the pitch rod and your hand? Do you find yourself looking at your fingers? All of this is your mind trying to find reference points to get some anchors as to where the notes are, as to what your fingers are supposed to do, and so on. Your mind is trying to anchor itself to something. And when you can free your mind of this desire, subconscious desire more often than not, to find these reference points, improvement just begins to happen. And the solution is incredibly simple. As a matter of fact, the solutions to all of these are so simple you might very well be skeptical and go ahead and be skeptical but try them and see what happens now in order to show you the solution for freeing your mind of these associations of these reference points and these anchors that it wants to grab onto I have to change the camera angle and the position of the theremin I'll be right back here I am I'm going to help my subconscious mind relieve itself of the desire to find reference points or anchors for the song I'm going to play the birthday song. Stand in front of your theremin. Make sure you record yourself. Stand in front of your theremin. Take one good look at the pitch rod so that you can orient yourself. You're going to play the birthday song. You're going to do it by turning your hand upside down and backwards. Okay? Do this twice. Every time you practice, the next five times you practice see what happens. It's going to improve your ear training. It's going to improve your ability to, to find pitches, but most of all, your mind's going to let go of the need to see something, feel something, or touch something. All right? You find a pitch at random, and you play the birthday song with your eyes closed. Wow. Now, you heard. Was that perfect? No. But I got a piece of it. I got it. This is very challenging, but do this four or five times over the next time you practice. You're going to see a result when you put yourself back in the correct position. All right. 
Let's move on to the next mindset. Second mindset that can hinder or adversely affect your ability to progress as a theremonist is the idea of perfection, of getting something completely right, of having it done perfectly. We all have songs we want to play. We all want to be able to play them well. And it is very, very easy to get pulled into the idea that I want to play this perfectly. I want to play it perfectly all the way through. But I'm here to tell you that perfection is an abstract result. Can you put into words what perfection means in terms of a song you're going to play? Is it just getting the notes right? Does it include expressing yourself? It's an abstraction. And it is an unreasonable goal because the more you strive for perfection and the more often you are prevented in whatever way from reaching perfection, the more you welcome frustration and feelings of being discouraged because it's not perfect. And here are some ways to tell if your mind is trying to be perfect on you. When you reach a certain point in a song you want to play and you make a mistake, do you stop and go over it again? Do you just stop yourself? Do you feel feelings of frustration when something is less than perfect? Do you keep telling yourself, if I can only get this right? Getting it right is another euphemism for perfection. Perfection is an abstraction. So what is the solution? How do you let go of the idea of perfection when perfection is, for the most part, an impossibility? It's an abstract impossibility. How do you surpass it? How do you overcome it? And with what do you replace it? I'll tell you. Human beings are result-oriented. That's why you want it to be perfect. You want that perfect result. Let's go for results that are reasonable and reachable. Results that are reasonable and reachable. And these will help you improve on any song that you want to play, there are three things that you can do that are very result-oriented, they are reasonable goals, and they are reachable. Here's the first one. When you start to practice, and you want to go through this song that you love and you really want to be able to play, try this. Play it non-stop, all the way through, no matter what happens. I guarantee you, your mind is going to try to stop you. You're going to want to hold, you're going to, it feels like there's a wall in front of you as you power through it, but trust me, play it all the way through, regardless of what happens. You notice there's no result other than playing it all the way through. You don't have to play it through without mistakes. You can play it through as slowly or as quickly as you want to, but you must start and go all the way through it to the end, no matter what happens. When you do this, you are training your mind to keep going. Secondly, when you are working on a song that you, prior to now, wanted to get perfect, I'm sure you hit sections in that song that are difficult for you. And with repetition, as you practice the song, more often than not, those difficult sections are repeated. It's this part that gives you difficulty, it's that part that gives you difficulty, and so on. So here is a result that is reasonable and reachable. Today, when I practice this song, instead of practicing the whole song, I already know what parts I have difficulty with so I will practice three times just the parts I have difficulty with. And notice, I have not said I'm practicing it until I get it right. I'm just going to practice three or four times each of the difficult passages in the song. And that's my result. I will have completed it without having to get it perfect. That's solution number two. And solution number three is... I'm going to come to this song that I really want to be able to play and play well, and this time I'm going to break it into its component parts, that is, its stanzas. By stanzas, I mean natural breaks in the song. 
in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We have Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how I wonder what you are, up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. These are the stanzas of the song, the song's component parts. And now I'm going to practice this song twice through and break it into its naturally occurring component stanzas. That is a reasonable, reachable result. And notice I have not said I'm going to try to get them perfect. I'm going to try to get them right. I am just going to play through each of the component parts. Do these three simple things and your mind will slowly let loose of this abstraction that you need to get it perfect and the results will come. They will happen. You will progress and you will improve and you will stop this niggling notion of having to get things perfect because you will see that you are getting better and better. Finally, the third mindset is what I call losing it or what happens when you lose it. It's a phenomenon that occurs, I think, with everyone sooner or later. It's happened to me dozens of times over the years and that's the following. I might be working on a particularly difficult piece or just a song that I have been able to play. I've either been able to play it at least once or twice since I'm working on it or it's something I've played for years and all of a sudden I come down to practice one day and it's gone. The ability to play it just seems to have dissolved. Nothing my hand does is right. My ear is off. I'm playing off key. I just seem to have lost it. Now, if you live with that reality, which can happen, it's real, and you live with it over the course of a few days as you keep attempting to get it back again, to get your ability back again, what this does is engender tons of frustration and tons of feelings of being discouraged. And this is a self-perpetuating cycle that the more you try and the less you are able to do it, the more frustration and discouraging feeling happens. To break that cycle, all you need is logic. Just logic. Now remember, this is a song that you have already been able to play. This is something you've already become proficient at. Not necessarily perfect, but proficient at. It's something you can do and that you've been happy about doing. Now, all of a sudden, one day, it's gone. And this disappearance of your abilities can happen for a day, it can happen for three days, it can happen for a week, it can happen for a month. It has happened to me two days before I had to play a particularly difficult piece for a wedding and I lost it two days before the wedding. And all it takes, and this is going to sound ridiculously absurdly simple, all it takes is using logic. And here it is. I played it once. I've already played this song. I already have the ability. I'll be able to do it again. It's as simple as that. And then what do you do? Just let yourself sit with that notion for a while, that reality. I've already played this. I can play it again. I'll be able to play it again. And instead of diving in on that cycle of feelings of discouragement, feelings of frustration, and that, oh my God, what's happened to me? I've lost it. Forget it. Do something else for a couple of days. Play some other songs. Work on something else. The ability will come back as you realize, I already did it once. I'll be able to do it again. It really is that simple. There you have it. Those are the three mindsets that can hinder you and there are the solutions that can help you. Over a few weeks time, if you practice using these solutions to the mindset that you may be having trouble with, you will see improvement. And you'll see it because why? Because you're recording yourself every time you do it. This gives you evidence-based proof that you are improving. Next time, instead of dealing with three mindsets that can hinder or impede your progress, 
we're going to deal with mindsets that you probably have never thought of that you can adopt, you can make it part of your practice that will actually help your progress as a theremonist. I'll see you then.